Welcome back. Israel has rejected what it is calling baseless claims from South Africa after it launched a genocide case against the country at the International Court of Justice. It comes as the Israeli military claims to have destroyed a tunnel network, which it says was a hideout belonging to Hamas's leader in Gaza. Joining me now is Gideon Levy, columnist for the Israeli newspaper Haaretz. Um, welcome to you, Mr Levy. Could you give us a sense of public opinion within Israel of the way the government, the military, is prosecuting this war? We still face an overall support in Israel for continuing the war. The scenes that you are exposed in the UK and elsewhere are not shown here in Israel, systematically not by the media, voluntarily not by the media, but most of the Israelis are not exposed to what you are exposed. And therefore, it's much easier to support this war without having any moral doubts about the outcomes. And what you can see in the international networks or in networks like your, yours is so horrifying that uh, you, you really ask yourself for how long and, and how long will this support go on? Because the support, no critic about this war, no question marks, no resistance, no opposition, nothing. Israel supports this war from wall to wall. Should the Israeli public uh, have access to reports like those to which you refer, shown here uh, in the UK and other countries? And are they aware of the, uh, the figures that are put forward, albeit from the Gaza, Gaza Health Ministry, about the number of casualties in this war so far in Gaza? Yes, sure, the figures are, are published, but figures are only figures. It's, you know, it's all about the framing. You can give figures, they might shock you, but Israel is really concentrated. It's in own sacrifice, in its own mourning, it's its own care about the hostages, and all this is very understandable and human. But as long as you don't see the scenes, you cannot understand what is Israel doing to Gaza right now. And therefore, there is this apathy and uh, more than this, you know that even to pay some kind of empathy with Gaza, with the pain of Gaza, solidarity with Gaza, is almost criminal now in Israel, and you might be taken to, to court and to justice. When uh, we speak to spokespeople from the IDF, as we do regularly on this channel, uh, they're always keen to underscore that with the figures of the number of people killed in Gaza, um, they say, but how do we know how many of those are terrorists? Is, is that sort of explanation and logic something that the Israeli public are comfortable with? I, I would answer you in a question. Eight, 9,000 children killed. Is there any chance that they were uh, terrorists? There was one day last week in which 162 babies were killed. Were they suspected as terrorists? Every eight minutes there is a child killed in Gaza. Can we really justify everything and ignore everything? I mean, the 7th was a turning point, the 7th of October. It was a barbaric attack over Israel. But this does not mean that now Israel has the right to do whatever it wants. And, you know, there are terrorists killed, no doubt about it, and there was a need to do something. Obviously, every country has its own right to protect itself, but there should be also some limits, and I don't see those limits implemented in Israel. Uh, it sounds... I mean, you're, the position that, that you're taking is, is, is much more nuanced um, than the position taken by many of the spokespeople that we uh, speak to from either the government in Israel or, indeed, from, from the military. Um, has there been pressure on, on the lines that you take in your reporting? No, I must say that there's a privileged Jew in Israel. I gain all the freedom uh, that I can expect. The street doesn't like me. The social media obviously doesn't like me. You wouldn't like to see my my uh, my social media, what I get there, the garbage that I get. But I feel totally free and above all um, 
totally safe. I, I'm not the story, really not. But what I must say in this context is that many of my friends, the leftists, changed in this war, even them. So you become more and more lonely. That's uh, unprecedented. I don't remember a war in which so little critics was heard, so little critics was legitimate. And, and, and Mr. Levy, what about the stated position from some representatives, um, in, I'm thinking particularly here, the UK ambassador to uh, is, uh, the Israeli ambassador here in, in the UK, that Israel is not looking for a two-state solution. What is the public support for that? It's off the table, totally off the table. Uh, Israel avoided under Netanyahu any discussion about the future, any discussion. Netanyahu himself doesn't believe in any kind of settlement with the Palestinians, and public opinion lost interest. I mean, our lives is very good in Israel. Why would we bother about what's going on in the West Bank? Anyhow, we hardly go there. They don't bother us. We don't bother them, so we think. And, and the issue is not on the table at all. And above all, I am afraid to tell you that the two-state solution is really only in the minds of all kinds of uh, European and American uh, politicians. It is so far-fetched to talk about it now when there is neither an Israeli partner and hardly a Palestinian partner. And above all, there is no room for a Palestinian state with 700,000 settlers. What kind of Palestinian state will it be exactly? Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, it paints a very dire picture, doesn't it, for the future of people in Gaza? And I just wanted to ask you as well about a, a story in uh, is Israel's newspapers about a teenager, 18 years old, who's conscientiously objected to going to fight for the IDF because of what's happened on October the 7th. He's being sent to prison. What is the public reaction to that? First of all, it's a very marginal story in Israel because the media always marginalize the refuseniks, and they are also very small in, in numbers. We have to realize that most of the Israeli young people are very happy to go to serve the army, are very happy to serve in Gaza now. You hear the soldiers, they are all very convinced that they are doing the right thing. There are almost no cases, except of the case that you just mentioned, no cases of refusal, of refusal uh, which tells you also a story about Israeli society and Israeli values. And where does this end? Mm. Not in a good place. I mean, I wish I could tell you it's going to end up somehow in a better place, but I cannot, with, I cannot really portray any kind of optimistic scenario in this reality, when Israel turns so much to the right pole, to the nationalistic and racist pole and militaristic pole, like never before, we are in a place that we have never been before in Israel. When Hamas is not weaker now, and politically Hamas is today stronger than it was. Military, obviously not. But politically, look at the polls in the West Bank. They are the leading power right now in the polls. So... Where can you go from here if the only language is the language of weapons and killings and war and, and conquering? How can you get out of it? What will those generations of, of Gaza children who are left now without parents, without homes, without anything, they will make peace with Israel? I mean, this will be their heritage. So... I'm very worried about the, the future, and even for the long run, it doesn't seem very promising. Gideon Levy, uh, thank you for taking the time to talk to us on Sky News. Thank you for having me.